Hi and welcome to the Evolve CEO Podcast. I'm your host Greg Gillies and this podcast is designed for high achieving CEOs, business founders and entrepreneurs who are looking for ways to expand beyond their business accomplishments, their life and their relationships. We will be taking a deep dive into all topics relating to success, love and happiness and we will be talking a lot around healing, alignment and manifestation which is the key to actualizing ourselves and reaching our highest potential. Look forward to you tuning in to this week's episode. Hi, and welcome back to the Evolve CEO podcast. So in today's podcast, we're going to be talking about emotions, emotional intelligence, and emotional control. Now, this podcast is designed for the high-achieving business leader, businessman, CEO. Um, we do have females that tune in to the podcast, but a lot of our conversation in the Evolve CEO is heavily swayed towards the highly driven masculine man. And for most of us, and this was definitely my journey, um, men grew up to not show emotions. Men grew up to be taught to be hard, to be tough, to not show emotions, don't show weakness, don't show fear, don't show sadness, don't cry, all of those sort of things. And I'm not talking about now in 2023. I'm talking about in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Yeah, I'm talking about the past generations. Now, that might have served our granddad in the earlier years and maybe even our parents to not show emotions because they had to go off to war and you don't want to show emotions or or let fear take over you if you're on a war field, yeah? Or you're going through a real a depression or a lack or a scarcity time in life. So back then, shutting those emotions down and being hard as nails and just Fighting for survival was necessary. But we now live in a time where so many people have still got the emotional intelligence and emotional belief systems from past generations, but we're living in a time where we need emotional intelligence and emotional control more than ever because of the amount of noise, information, stimulation, just the world that our children are now living in, for our own health and well-being. So we're going to be talking deep around emotions because they are core to being a human being. Now, Tracy, I'm going to hand it over to you so that you can kind of talk about what does it mean if you don't process your emotions? Like what happens mentally, energetically, and physi physiologically when people don't process their emotions or manage their emotions correctly and they just hold it down or suppress it or put a lid on it? I think most people's behaviours and, you know, even suppressing emotions, they all really are shaped by our past. And it's often like people are still living in the past or from that childlike state. So what happens with even the brain neurologically is memory is formatted by highly emotional charge states. So something either has to be really positive and it forms a memory or really negative. And a lot of these things as a child that, you know, maybe we didn't have as much control or choices or these things and we felt, you know, maybe frightened or all of these different things, we would then create this memory of a situation and what that equates to. And as an adult, we might know that a situation doesn't hold that level of danger or threat or stress. And I'm actually an adult now and I am more empowered to, you know, step out of that place. But the brain will pull on this memory and the amygdala will then kind of end up firing into that fight or flight mode. And it's an automatic response. So half the time with these emotions, if we don't actually deal with our emotional states, because emotions are like messengers calling us into action. It's actually the way we transform our life. And I know I lived a life of suppression. I was never taught how to even deal with my emotions, let alone show them, <laughs> feel them, process them. So it's like I'm not dealing with my past properly. And then I'll have all these situations appear that I'm like, like maybe I'm not as in control as I would like or I get triggered or um, my response is kind of like I fly into this, um, I don't know, like 
you know what I'm trying to say here, that it's like I'm almost being led by that kind of subconscious or unconscious programming. So even like the level of emotions, when we don't process them, they get stored in our body. It, even like our muscles can hold memory or our organs and glands. So from a healing point of view and the work that I do, it's like you've got to heal all these things, you know, like stress, your adrenals, they get taxed. And so even that stress and that fear, and it would be living from that low level states of, you know, lack, fear, I don't know, anger, all of these different things. And the way to really create a higher path or a new path or a new response is to look at these emotions and what they're trying to tell us. I would even take that one step further and say, sometimes people just think things like anxiety are just emotions. They're not. There's like this biofeedback loop in the body that it's like I'm depleted. I'm running from the stress place. It affects, you know, hormonal responses in the body. So even overwhelm, stress, fear, anxiety, there is so much more than just an emotion going on. And if I'm not willing to actually look at what these emotions are telling me, it's like I'm missing really key information in my life about not just my physical health, my mental health, even you know, making those better choices, right choices, higher path. So I just want to touch on some of those things that Tracy spoke about because they're critical and we all need to understand this is because our upbringing from the day we were born, we are exposed and our brain develops by the environment that we are around. So if there is highly emotionally charged events, like um, there could be, could have an angry parent that has a lot of anger, you're going to pick that up, right? And as you start to bring these belief systems into adulthood, um, the child brain is developed around um, fear, yeah? So fear pretty much controls the brain because of the way we are all brought up in society. And then when we become adults, we don't want to have fear running our life because we want to take action and we want to create things but then we get into conflict between our unconscious programming and our conscious wants and desires and this is where the brain gets into conflict and as tracy was saying by not understanding the emotions and the deeper underlying kind of values and beliefs that are attached to these emotions and these events and these anchors we can end up causing ourselves a lot of neurological stress and conflict which will then end up creating conflict in relationships. Like you could be triggered by your partner saying something, which is triggering an emotion that you don't want to process. Now I'll give you an example of myself, which I wasn't aware of until I did the deep emotional healing work. And this is very common with a lot of men. I used to have a lot of anger issues. I was a very angry person. I was an angry young man. I was either really jovial and funny in the life of the party, or if I drank too much, I could get really angry, or I would get triggered really easily. And I didn't realize that it was actually a mask for depression and anxiety. So deep down underneath, I had so much disconnection with myself that I was running a lot of depression and anxious cycles, but... I would want to mask and hide that because in my mind at the core of my belief systems was that is a weakness. And if I show that weakness out to the world, then my biggest fears of failing and losing and not being accepted and validating would come true. So I didn't realize that this is why I always had anger. It was like anger was my survival mechanism. Anger was my protection mechanism. I'd use anger on the rugby field to be a top rugby player. I'd use anger in a situation where I felt threatened. And it gets to the point where I used anger in my relationship with Tracy because we get in arguments and fights and I didn't want her to trigger my deepest insecurities. So I just get angry and blow the conversation up. So this is why so many people need to really do the inner work and to be able to process their emotions because so many people are talking about emotional intelligence, but if you honestly haven't done the inner work, the inner child work and gone back to the core underlying programs and then healed all of the energetic structures because emotions are energy in motion. And if you're not processing emotions, the energy gets stuck in your body and that energy gets stuck in your body makes us physically sick. 
it literally weighs down on us and it breaks us down. If you're not doing the inner healing and processing that sort of stuff, then you are not evolving your emotional intelligence. And so many people are out there saying they're emotionally intelligent that haven't done the deepest level of work, but they're faking it. And all they're doing is causing more conflict between what's really going on in the mind and what they're just putting out there in the world so that they get perceived as if they're emotionally intelligent. But people's anger or whatever emotion it is for each person will be a very, very different story totally. underneath it. And so, you know, we work with people and what I love about this work is one person's healing journey is never the same because even a situation occurs and we all take different meaning to it. It's what it means for us. And so when you do this healing work and you resolve these, let's say we're talking about emotions, but really one emotion could hold this massive story you release these trigger points and I'm not triggered by situational things or other people because I don't have that fight or flight response attached to that situation anymore because I've healed the underlying cause to it. It even goes a step further as in we could talk about epigenetics, we could talk about how our past traumas, even those emotional states, all of these things change and shape our gene expression and, you know, that's our blueprint for life. It's even basis of how our body will heal and repair or respond to things. So when we're talking about emotions, we're not just really talking about this eerie, fairy thing about emotions. It goes so much deeper. But the emotions are like messengers. They're giving us information. And a lot of people were never taught to read it correctly or even want to read it. And if we're then talking about situational things or our kids, maybe I'm the stoic man that doesn't really show how I feel. You know, what we say or what we see is only like a tiny bit of the story. There's all this other energetic information that almost gets passed along to people. So I know for myself, you know, I suffered from depression and anxiety and all of these things because I was actually, it was to do with my physical health and I didn't realize that. But my children... Even if I didn't say these things to them, they will pick up on this energetic information and that will end up being a part of the story that they carry. It's like we want to take stuff for our parents or I know sometimes I feel a little bit bad because I can see a bit of the stress management of especially my oldest. Greg and I didn't used to be these people. You know, we used to kind of live a very different life and through that healing journey, we've changed a lot. But some of those old programs that I used to run about really not even suppressing everything, not managing my stress, she does not have the best stress management techniques because I didn't even have to say it to her. She modeled, she saw, she read the other energetics behind it. And so emotional intelligence isn't really just about reading emotions. It's about really reading ourselves and healing all those underlying things that allow us to respond from a higher emotional state or place. Totally. It's mastering to be calm in the chaos, yeah, to not be triggered. Um, and we do these really deep assessments with our clients around the nine pillar framework and, and underneath the kind of mental emotional, there is a question around rating your emotional control. And it's when you are exhausted and depleted and you are tired or you're hungry or you're just fatigued, right? That is when the emotional control needs to be measured is because we've actually been programmed from a very, very young age, which is where the fear and a lot of the negative bias that we carry in our unconscious mind which triggers a lot of this emotional imbalance between what we want to be and what we believe we are at the deepest level. Now, the two, the two lowest vibrational frequency emotions that there are, and you need to understand that all emotions have an energetic vibration because everything is any energy and it has an energetic vibration. And the two lowest ones that people use in society every single day a guilt and shame. And if your child is not behaving well, automatically from the teachings from your parents, from your grandparents, from generations before, we automatically use guilt and shame to get them to behave well or to get them to do their chores. It's just an automatic response. But then they create the same belief system of guilt and shame. So when it comes to emotional intelligence, when it comes to emotional control, when it comes to healing and raising your energetic vibration, 
This is about being in expanded states. Now, people want to be in the emotions of expanded states, which will help you grow and attract everything you want in your life. And I'm talking about love, joy, peace, even the feelings of enlightenment and that higher level connection. But most people are living with anger, guilt, shame. It's kind of like they're just getting by. And then they want to avoid it because it doesn't feel nice. Yeah. Like emotions can feel scary and hard. And honestly, even though they're just emotions, there is lots of backstories to them. But if we're not processing our emotions and we don't even know how to kind of go into them or talk about them, what chance do our kids have? And we see this time and time again now, don't we, Greg? Like our children having kind of issue, and it always comes back to that emotional intelligence. We're here to teach our kids that, and that would be a massive key development area in life, and yet most people struggle with their own if they haven't kind of had that foundation to be shown how to do it or have then unpacked and done that inner healing work. Now, Tracy's spoken a lot about our ch about children. If you've got children, you listen to this podcast, but it's all relationships. If you want to evolve a relationship, you need to evolve your own inner emotions because that means you will evolve yourself emotionally and energetically. And then when you show up in relationships, there is a different energetic connection between them. Yeah. But if, you're, if you want your children to grow up with emotional intelligence, which is the number one intelligence that they need in the world that we are going to, seriously, the amount of noise and information and fake influences that our kids are getting indoctrinated with, if they don't have emotional intelligence about who they are and be strong within themselves, they are fully influenced by who they feel that they are not. Now, the only place that they're going to get the emotional intelligence is from their parents, yeah? But their parents, if you're not dealing with your own internal emotions, if you're not dealing with your own underlying anger, we just did a previous podcast on alcohol. If you're using alcohol to suppress your emotions so that you can change your state and you can be happy so that your anger switch doesn't kick in, you're not actually teaching your kids emotional intelligence. You're teaching them emotional suppression. And if they grow up with emotional suppression, then all of the fake influences online will control how they think and feel about themselves moving forward. So we're going into a whole nother topic around parenting, but these are all the key important attributes around why we need to literally reprogram and redevelop ourselves away from the way we were created and the identities that we have formed about ourselves from generations before us because we don't live in the same times. And now emotional intelligence is more important than intellectual intelligence is because we've got AI and, and we've got advanced softwares that can give us the intellect to get the information. So we're moving into a world where emotional intelligence and spiritual intelligence is going to be the key to the people who evolve, yeah? And if you don't deal with your emotions and it's suppressed energy and that energy is not flowing in your body and you get blocks and restrictions in your glands and organs, it will all contribute to illness and disease. This is the reality of it, yeah? Yeah, most definitely. I think it's one of the most overlooked areas, really. It's overlooked because people don't want to face it. <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're not meant to be, well, we are thinking beings because obviously we use our brain, but we're meant to be feeling beings. And that is almost like, you know, vibration, as Greg said. It's the language of the universe. Everything is vibrational. And, you know, our words and all of those things, they only kind of go so far. You can feel people's states and you can feel when somebody is – I don't even know what I want to say. Like when they just have that presence, they know who they are because they've done their that aura. work. They know their truth. They're kind of clear in their energy. They don't get triggered. It's nice to actually be heard by somebody and, um, you know, especially in the business world, being able to hear people's concerns or issues or heightened emotional states without that feeding into my own and triggering me into a reactive state. Because if I can step above all of that, it's like there's this higher picture and there's this higher resolve and solution. And that's what leadership 
is about. It's about having all of those, you know, emotional intelligence um, as well as obviously intellectual as well. 100%. And you can't evolve somebody else beyond where you've evolved. So if you are a leader or you are a a senior people manager and you're responsible for a lot of people and you can't handle the amount of energy and conflict and emotion that it triggers within you when people are constantly bringing problems and, and asking you to solve or if there's conflict or if there's troubleshooting and you want to avoid that, if you want to be the best leader and a conscious leader and an emotionally intelligent leader, it's all about doing that inner work. It's all about healing the emotions. It's all about healing the beliefs. It's all about healing the energy. And when you elevate, you will not be triggered by other people's emotions because you've already dealt with it. And what happens when you actually raise your energetic vibration by doing this inner healing, by doing the healing of the mind, the healing of the emotions, the healing of your physical body and your energy? And when you start raising up and you're actually truly living in alignment with high vibrational frequency emotions like love and joy and peace and contentment, people will rise up to meet you. This is conscious leadership. This is an emotional leadership. People will either rise up to meet you or they will fall away. And life becomes so much easier. But if you're bogged down and you're not dealing with your own internal stuff, life gets hard. Because those low vibrational frequencies will attract more low vibrational frequency, which will be other people's emotions. This is where a lot of conflict and drama, even in your marriage or with employees, and you're just wondering why do people just keep on bringing me this shit? It's like a magnet. Yeah, it's like attracts like. So if you want the positive stuff to attract, heal and do the emotional intelligence work. It is such a huge topic but at the same time it's simple as in I don't know just simple but it's hard (laughs) I I often find that people will say to me that they want to be more spiritually connected and then they kind of say that they want to tune into all this intuition and things like that but I say are you listening to your body because again your body's giving you cues even like we're talking we've done other podcasts about you know physical health and adrenal dysfunction Even like being tired and exhausted, it's cues to do things, to not let things escalate. And maybe it means I'm in this low level lack state or fear state and I'm just functioning from this place. And as Greg said before, the toll that that actually takes on not just, you know, it's not just mind stuff, it's actual physical health. So releasing all of these things that are almost just keeping you that low level kind of, um, you know, energetic state. Mm. I've literally had to teach myself how to be okay with just being relaxed and content without substance or without any distraction. And it took a long time, but I needed to do the emotional healing work and the mental healing work first, right? This is a big challenge in today's society. People are so overstimulated, they don't know how to slow down and relax. They don't even know how to rest and repair and heal themselves. And when you stop, so I just did a post today that was talking about adrenal dysfunction, that that start of adrenal dysfunction is adrenal fatigue and we feel tired and a lot of people don't like that place. They love the grind, they love the push through because they've got too much to do for that success. But when we push through into the next place, adrenal exhaustion is we overproduce cortisol and it masks a lot of symptoms in our body. And really, we don't realize how depleted we're getting. So we're not just talking about, you know, joy, love and feeling those states or if somebody's anger, there is much more going on in a bigger picture, but it's the emotional things that lead us to really kind of hear this deeper picture. So that's why I say to people, you know, if they want to be more intuitive, are you listening to your body? Because the more that you do this healing and clearing work and the more that you get to know your own energy, It's easier to tell what's yours and what's not yours because there is so much, I I don't know, interconnectedness or even, you know, somebody's heightened state and it triggers mine. But when I do these things, I take away all these trigger points that I know my energy. I know when it's my stuff, when it's not. And I behave differently. I behave more elevated. I behave better. 
also I'm not so depleted because there becomes this point when people have just held on to stuff for so long and haven't dealt with it. It's like a bucket and a tipping point, an inflamed central nervous system that never leads to good responses because anything, you know, that extra pressure, that thing I didn't foresee just tips me over the edge. So emotional intelligence is like a doorway to hear a higher and bigger picture and that is the way when people talk about expanding consciousness it's like becoming aware it's like it's like healing all our holes all our flaws all our insecurities and sometimes they're scary to look at and it feels hard because you know it's kind of horrible sometimes to hear maybe that I'm got these places where I don't feel like I'm good enough or that I'm actually afraid of something. But if I look at these things, I can transform them so I don't have as many areas to constantly keep pulling me back down. Yeah. Fear is a emotion that is a huge driver for most people. And we can use fear to get things done, but fear can also destroy us. Fear can be what pushes us to a point where we just start to break ourselves down. I like that saying that's, well, it's my saying. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, sorry, stress is really just a lazy word for fear. I would definitely say that. A lot of people carry this thing where they just say, I'm so stressed, I'm so stressed, but it's like, well, what are you actually fearful of? What is actually the understory? Because until you hear what the real story is, you kind of can't really shift and change anything. We could talk for days on emotions and emotional intelligence because, as Tracy said earlier, it goes into so many different areas, right? It goes into epigenetics, it goes into childhood programming, it goes into relationships, it goes into parenting, it goes into everything. It's because we're emotional creatures, yeah? But we need to be able to process and express our emotions, but we also need to understand how it's interconnected with everything. Okay, it's interconnected with our mind, body, energy, and our spiritual aspects. And again, I'm going to reiterate that the world that we live in and the world that we're moving into and our children are moving into, emotional intelligence and spiritual intelligence is going to be the key for people to evolve and have a thriving life in the future. Because the intellectual intelligence has gone so far that people are stuck in their minds and they're not actually listening to their body, which is the feeling part, what Tracy was talking about, the emotional part. Yeah. And then we get very intellect to move away from what's truly going on. So that's all for me today. It's all from any, me. All from you today. We'll be talking, this, this is going to be intertwined in a lot of our podcasts because it's who we are, right? We're human beings having an emotional experience. So we will see you in the next podcast. Please drop us some likes, comments, anything relating to our podcast so that we know for future podcast reference and content to share with you. An amazing day. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the Evolve CEO podcast. If you value the information that is in our podcast, please like, subscribe, and add a review to our podcast page because it'll help us understand the value that you are receiving and more importantly, spread the world of this podcast. Also share it with your friends and your family. Now, every listener of our podcast gets a free gift from us. And this is our nine pillars of success, love and happiness life assessment. This is the exact same life assessment that our high level clients which are CEOs and business leaders go through on an annual basis so that they can assess and reflect the past 12 months of their life and then plan their desired outcome for the next 12 months of their life. And this is our gift to you for listening in. So please follow the links below and you'll find the link to the assessment page. You'll also find Tracy and my social media links. We would love for you to connect with us on our social media channels Follow our additional content on there as we want to provide as much value as we can in the event of helping you create more success, love and happiness in your life. Thank you and we'll see you in the next episode.